guys as we know okay we are conducting a you know cyber security foundation course okay and this is nawaz i am a corporate trainer consultant and mentor okay and i'll be your host for this today's session so as we know we are looking for a you know domain 2 since we completed the domain one which is nothing but a networking basics and this is a domain two defensive security basics so let's uh, like i already introduced myself okay in the previous session so no issues so let us go ahead with the agenda for the today's session which is going to be you know 11 day of this particular course and you will see that in the today's agenda the first thing okay we will be talking about is what is data privacy then we'll explore the different types of data then we'll talk about data privacy controls as well as data privacy laws what are the different laws okay based on the uh, you will see that the many popular laws okay so go ahead and understand data privacy let's understand what is data privacy so as we know guys the data privacy is you can say that is referred to you know the production of uh, you know the protection as well as the management of personal information or data that an individual or organization collects processes stores and shares so it involves ensuring that you know individuals have control over their personal information and that their data is not used in ways that are harmful or unethical so data privacy includes protecting information such as the you know the name different addresses of you know users we can say phone numbers we can also uh, also say that like social security numbers our financial information health records okay as well as other any kind of sensitive data okay and we are trying to you know prevent that data from any kind of unauthorized access use or any kind of disclosure as well it also involves ensuring that data is accurate up to date and only used for purposes for which it was collected so for that we have the you know data privacy laws and regulations exist in many countries and industries and they aim to protect individuals privacy rights and prevent abuses of personal data these laws often require organizations to obtain consent from individuals before collecting processing or sharing their data and they impose penalties for non-compliance or any kind of data breaches okay so like we have the so many countries in the world and many countries you will find that have their own personal laws on the data privacy okay so and for like for not only countries for organization as well as even for individuals to data is so much important okay so that's why you will see that the laws for a you know data privacy so let us talk about the why data uh, you know why data privacy is important okay so guys why you know data privacy is so much important okay so basically because of to you know protect that particular data from unauthorized access or the person who have the you know the bad you know like he was not able to do this uh, bad things okay like the you know sharing personal data on uh, you know on the internet like that so if we talk about the what are the different you know reasons we have so first reason is nothing but you know it's to protecting personal information okay so we can say that personal information you know is often sensitive and people have the right to control how it is used okay so 
data privacy ensures that individuals personal information is protected from authorized access or any kind of misuse we can say that which can prevent identity theft any kind of financial fraud and other types of harms if we talking about the different incidents about this protecting personal information so like you like as we were discussing a many uh, you know case studies about you know data breaches you know any kind of uh, attack you will see so as as we discussed in the previous session as well equifax data breach so as we know in 2017 again you know uh, it's a credit reporting agency equifax suffered a massive data breach that basically exposed the you know personal information of over 143 million people including their names social security numbers their birth dates as well as their addresses too okay so basically the breach was caused by vulnerability in equifax website uh, and that had gone unpatched right so this incident highlighted the importance of protecting personal information and ensuring that systems are secure and up to date like in the same way as we mentioned a previous example which is nothing but a target target data breach uh, if you remember so it's a retail giant we can say so the target also suffer from a data breach that exposes the personal information up to you know uh, around 110 million customers of target including names addresses their phone numbers their credit card details okay as well as their debit card details too and basically the breach was caused by a vulnerability in target's payment system and it showed the importance of protecting personal information and having strong cyber security measures in place like the in the same way again if we're talking about the another example so we can say that the capital one again it is a one of the largest credit card issuer in the us like in the 2019 uh, capital one also suffered a data breach that exposed the personal information of over 100 million customers and their applicants so breach was caused by again vulnerability in capital one's cloud-based system and it highlighted the importance of you know protecting personal information and ensuring that systems are secure again up to date okay now what about next importance of data privacy so if we're talking about the ensuring confidentiality so again in this scenario so uh, many industries okay if you're talking about especially you know healthcare and finance so basically this requires confidentiality to protect sensitive information right uh, data privacy in like ensures that this information is only accessible by authorized personnel who need it for legitimate purposes like uh if we know that like in 2020 a group of hackers breached the computer systems of university of california as well as the san francisco university and demanded a ransom to return the stolen data so the data included confidential you know patient information from uh, university of california's medical center which is leading you know which is leading search institute for covid 19 so the incident highlighted the importance of you know ensuring confidentiality for any kind of sensitive data particularly in healthcare industry we can say okay from this particular incident okay and as we like very famous example for this is nothing but you know panama papers okay do you know about panama papers like recently i can say uh, like few years back okay like panama paper leaks exposed okay over the internet and you know many uh, like 
okay at that time you will see that the many uh, you know headlines which are related to panama papers okay around all over the you know all over the news channels you will see that this thing panama paper leaks okay so uh, basically the panama paper leak exposed over around you know 11 million documents from a law firm in panama that specified in offshore tax havens and the documents reveal confidential information about the financial affairs of many wealthy individuals and sparked a global a global investigation into tax evasion and money laundering so this incident highlighted the importance of you know ensuring confidentiality of sensitive information particularly in the legal and financial industries okay again we can say that like uh, again in the healthcare industry uh, there was a attack you know cyber attack on the uk's national health service we can say nhs like resulted in the disruption of healthcare services across the country so the attack which was caused by a type of ransomware encrypted the data on thousands of computers and demanded payment in exchange for the decryption key so the incident highlighted the importance of ensuring confidentiality again for sensitive data particularly in the healthcare se sector we can say okay now yes so if we're talking about building trust so again here you can see data privacy practices can help to build trust as well okay between individuals and organizations like when people feel that their personal information is being handled responsibly so they are more likely to trust the organization that is collecting and using their data so in simple uh, example okay we can say that like we are depositing our money on a bank okay which bank okay so the a trusted bank okay we are depositing the our money okay in a any trusted bank okay or any you know any government bank bank you can say so uh, again we can say data privacy practices again can again as we know uh, it just uh, it can be able to build a you know trust between individuals and organizations okay <clears throat> so uh, if you're talking about the real life incidents and so like in 2018 facebook was involved in a scandal in which it was revealed the data of millions of users had been harvested without their consent by a political consulting firm called cambridge analytica okay and the incident you know eroded public trust in facebook and raised concerns about how social media companies handle their personal data as a result facebook faced regulatory scrutiny and implemented new privacy policy to rebuild trust with its users as well as uh, like recently in 2021 uh, like you will see that the like the whatsapp you know data privacy okay uh, so because of that particular reason like whatsapp updated its private uh, you know privacy policy to allow for more data sharing with its parent company facebook so you know then at that time okay many you know uh, people are shifting uh, you know are just you know deleting the facebook they they uh, they were you know not using and they were starting you know not using the facebook uh, the you know whatsapp i would say okay so the update sparked concerns among users about how their personal information would be used and shared and many user began switching to you know alternative you know alternative messaging apps like uh, like at that time one uh, i guess by okay one famous person's tweet okay uh, like one messaging app 
okay uh, like people start using that particular app and that is nothing but signal okay so the that this particular incident highlighted the importance of building trust with users and being transparent about how personal information in being is being used and shared okay again we can uh, also if we uh, if you remember like in 2020 like video sharing app tiktok faced scrutiny over its data privacy practices particularly in relation to the collection and use of data from young users so the app was accused of collecting and sharing user data without consent and it faced criticism from you know lawmakers and leg uh, you know regulators around the world and the this particular incident also highlighted the importance of building trust with users and being transparent about how personal information is being used as well as shared okay like we can say particularly in the context of social media and user generated content okay then if we talk about compliance with regulations okay this is again very much important you know aspect of you know we can say that the it is very important okay playing a role uh, you know data privacy so here you can see many countries and industries have regulations around data privacy as we know uh, like such as the general data protection regulation gdpr okay we'll talk about that in the further uh, further session like in the U european union or the health insurance portability and accountability act hipaa in the us and compliance with these regulations is important to avoid penalties and maintain the organization's reputation okay like if you're talking about this uh, particular incident yeah so we can say that you know uh, like in 2019 google was fined around 50 million euros by the french data protection authority for violating the you know uh, you you know european unions you know general data protection regulation which is nothing but gdpr and the fine you know fine was lived for not obtaining adequate consent from users for personalized advertising and you know and for not providing enough transparency about how users data was being used so this incident okay again we can say showed the importance of you know complying with data privacy regulations particularly in the european union so uber was fined around i can say uh, 400000 euros by the uk information commissioner office yeah i can say ico for failing to protect its customers personal information during a 2016 data breach so the information commissioner's office found that uber had not uh, taken adequate measures to secure its customer data and had failed to notify affected individuals in a timely manner so again this particular incident showing the importance of complying with data privacy regulations and taking appropriate measures to protect the customer's personal information like they are connect, they are collecting like in the same uh, like in the uk okay in the same year 2018 facebook was fined also around 500000 euros okay by again the same office information commissioner's office okay for its role in the cambridge uh, you know analytica scandal and the fine was lived for uh, you know failing to safeguard users data and for not being you know transparent about how the data was being used so this particular incident again showed us the importance of complying with data privacy regulations okay and taking responsibility for protection of users data okay now let's talk about the next one okay which is nothing but ethical consideration so if we're talking about this particular aspect of uh, you know why data privacy you know important we can say 
so here data privacy also has you know ethical consideration and we can say it is important to respect individuals privacy right and not use their personal information in ways that are harmful or unethical okay like for example uh, we can say like if you know the you know face recognition app example okay clear view ai so like uh, in 2019 okay so that particular face recognition app we can say clear view ai had scrapped billions of images from social media sites without users con you know consent and showed the data to law enforcement agencies so the incident raised ethical concerns about the use of facial recognition technology and the need for stronger regulations around the collection and use of personal data right like the in the same manner in 2020 as well the video conferencing app zoom faced criticism over its privacy and security part uh, you know practices and this app was found to be collected more data than necessary and sharing it with third party companies without users consent so again we can say this particular incident also raised ethical concerns about the collection and use of personal data particularly in the context of remote work and you know online meetings like if we talking about the you know the next incident okay again that will happen uh, in the you know basically uh, in the 2021 so uh, you know uh, it was revealed that you know popular uh, we can say that genealogy website okay my heritage okay if you know uh, this particular incident so my heritage had sold access to its dna database to a private equity firm okay so the this particular incident raised again ethical concerns about the use of personal gene, you know genetic information and the need for stronger regulations around the collection and use of such kind of data okay so let's again explore the few more okay and then we'll move to the next topic okay because it's again important and because of that you will find that so many uh, data privacy laws are there okay so let's understand the preventing discrimination okay <clears throat> and it is a you know again the most important one to show us that importance of data privacy which is nothing but a preventing discrimination so as we know data privacy can also help to prevent discrimination by ensuring that you know uh, personal information is not used to unfairly target or discriminate against you know any kind uh, any individual based on their race uh, their gender any their religion or other personal characteristics okay like for example in uh, in 2019 google was accused of pay discrimination against female employees and the company was sued by female software engineers who claim that they were paid less than male colleagues for the same work so the incident again we can say highlighted the importance of preventing discrimination in the workplace and ensuring equal pay for equal work right like uh, if we talk about another incident so in uh, i can say in 2018 uh, Airbnb implemented new policies to prevent discrimination against guests uh, based on their race, religion, sexual orientation and other protected characteristics and the policies were put in place after reports of discrimination by host and they you know demonstrated the importance of preventing discrimination in the sharing economy like uh, the same example as we know uh, Uber's you know like in uh, 2017 a court ruled that uber's driver rating system could be discriminatory against drivers with disabilities the ruling demonstrated 
you know the importance of preventing discrimination in technology platforms and ensuring that they are accessible to all users okay then we have protecting intellectual properties okay we can say data privacy can also uh, protect intellectual properties by ensuring that sensitive information such as any kind of trade secrets uh, research detail and you know development is not shared with you know unauthorized individual or organization like for example uh, like in yes in uh, in 2019 apple won a around you know around i guess uh, 539 million dollar okay lawsuit against samsung for patent okay infringement so the lawsuit centered around uh, a design patent released to the iphone and demonstrated the importance of protecting intellectual property in the technology industry okay so basically samsung uh, you know uh, copied that particular patent of uh, apple's iphone and uh, you know apple won the lawsuit so uh, we can also say that like in 2017 the music streaming service spotify was uh, you know sued for copyright in you know infringement by musing uh, you know musing publishers and the uh, you know publishers claim that spotify had not properly licensed their music and the uh, lawsuit highlighted the again importance of protecting intellectual properties in the music industry okay and you know uh, like in 2016 as we know uh, as we all know the pfizer uh, you know pfizer the, the pharmaceutical company was awarded around 2.3 billion in uh, billion dollar in damages in a lawsuit against a company that had produced a generic version of one of its drugs and the lawsuit you know demonstrated the importance of protecting intellectual property in the pharmaceutical industry and the role of patents in promoting innovation okay then if we're talking about the next which is nothing but preserving personal autonomy so here okay you can say data privacy is also important to preserve personal autonomy people should have uh, you know the right to control how their personal information is used and to make informed decisions about whether or not they want to share their data right so uh, again we can say that there are many examples for uh, this thing okay like uh, like in 2021 20, like apple implemented new privacy features that give users more control over their personal information okay like the feature allow users to choose uh, which apps can access their data and provide more transparency about how their data is being used okay and this particular uh, the move okay demonstrated the importance of preserving personal autonomy and you know giving users control over their data right so again okay we'll be talking about one uh, data privacy law which is nothing but general data protection regulation okay implemented by european union okay basically which gives user more control over their personal data and requires companies to obtain explicit consent for its collection and use okay so if you see uh, like in the microsoft team app when you are uh, uh, with you know someone with uh, you know in a video conference you can say so at that time if okay if that person start recording the video so at that time okay uh, it will definitely you know uh, you know microsoft team show you a notification that uh, you know this particular you know uh, someone who started the recording so did he take the consent okay to you know start the recording like you will find the one notification okay on the top okay so that is nothing but a you know good move 
so what about next preventing data breaches okay so as we know data breaches can have serious uh, you know serious consequences including financial loss or any kind of damage to reputation and you know identity theft so data privacy practices can help to prevent data breaches by ensuring that sensitive data is properly secure and protected from unauthorized access as we know like uh, there are so many data breaches were happened in the past like equifax we know uh, the target okay so basically uh, in that you will find that you know data privacy laws okay uh, prevented a uh, data breaches so uh, like one of the famous example okay you will see like uh, that happened in you know 2012 okay and with the social media platform linkedin so basically linkedin also suffered a data breach and that exposed the you know password of over 167 million users so again we can say the you know this particular breach was you know caused by vulnerability in linkedin's security system and it highlighted the importance of preventing data breaches and ensuring that user data is properly protected okay and in the last you will see that the supporting innovations okay you will find that supporting innovations so you know data privacy can also support innovation by enabling the responsible use of data for research and development like while pro while protecting individuals privacy rights like when people uh, feel that their personal information is being handled responsibly so they may be more willing to share their data for you know research purposes uh, which can lead to new discoveries and advancements in various fields right so like for example if we're talking about like uh, a the pharmaceutical company okay moderna develop a covid-19 vaccine using you know messenger rna mrna we can say technology so this particular technology had been uh, in development for over a decade and the successful development for this vaccine demonstrated the importance of supporting innovations in the life sciences like the uh, if you talk about the next incident like uh, in 2020 spacex successfully launched and you know landed a you know spacecraft become the first private company to do so so this particular event demonstrated the you know importance of supporting innovations in the space industry and the potential for private companies to you know drive advancements in space exploration okay like the same thing you will see in the tesla as well okay after this guys okay these all are nothing but you will find the you know why okay it these all are terms okay show you the importance of data privacy okay now as we are talking about the data privacy data privacy okay so let's understand what is data and how people generating data how companies are generating data so guys how many different ways people or organizations can generate data okay so you will find that smartphone okay you are generating data okay each and every time when you are using the smartphone okay any app that is generating data then uh, you know uh, any uh, you know i can say uh, the laptop okay any kind of network that you have okay that is generating data then you will find that the you know uh, you know on the you know in the space as well okay there are satellites so they are also generating data okay like there are so many different things and each and every time you will find that okay there is data generation happening okay in the world so like uh, like if you don't know so let me tell you that okay in the past years okay like uh, in the previous year like people generated around you know each and every people generated you know around 1.7 mb of data each second okay so just okay calculate and uh, just like nowadays you will find that around 8 billion people's are you know 
are there in the word okay divide that particular size of the data that you just generated divided by the total population on the uh, earth okay if you just calculate that so you will find that around 1.7 mb of data every person generating every second okay so that is the thing and now you will find that the 5 gb uh, like uh, is already there so like there is you know exponential growth in uh, you know in generating the data so let us talk about the different types of data that you are generating all of you okay know about the chat gpt right so chat gpt is a model machine learning model right so behind the scene okay how much data they use to build that particular model any guesses how much data they uh, you know use to build that particular chat gpt so basically they use 47 you know terabytes of data to build that particular model okay chat gpt with you will find that around you know 175 billion parameters okay so okay after that you will find that the that particular you know tool that you are using okay name as a chat gpt okay so that's the thing and now they are building chat gpt4 okay so which means again and see see guys they are they have used 47 tb of data and that data is just the text data okay that data is just the text data in the form of text natural language okay like uh, they uh, any a kind of educational pptes are there pdf are there okay like that they use that kind of data okay and they created chat gpt now let's come to our topic which is nothing but the different types of data okay as you mentioned uh, like the structure the image kind of data video kind of data you know then personal data you know geospatial data few mentioned that okay as well as uh, like your text data like the machine data you know so these all kind of data okay are there so let's understand this one by one so if i tell you what is structure data so data in arrange format or we can simply say that uh like if the data which is in a you know format let's say uh, your excel file or your you know uh, database management file your you know yes tabular format in simple words yeah so that is nothing but a structured data right so we can simply say that again the uh, you know the example for this is nothing but you know uh, customers information sales report and inventory data that is nothing but a structured data or any kind of data that is arranged in a structural uh, you know in a uh, in a very proper manner okay row and column wise in a tabular format we can say that is nothing but a structured data okay what about another unstructured data so basically if we talk about okay if we refer to this particular data so you know that is not you know organized we can say in a specific format like making it more difficult to analyze right like examples for those are nothing but your email data which is uh, you know unstructured data then social media post that is again uh, you know unstructured data then your audio video recordings again you can say that is unstructured data okay now what about next type semi structured data yeah we can say that okay basically uh, this data has some structure okay but not enough to consider fully structured okay like for example xml file json data right so these are the few example okay where you can say that it is a semi structured data right then what about big data okay this is again a very famous term in data science artificial intelligence machine learning big data so what is big data guys let's talk about uh, let's 
take one example google okay and google is generating data in how many format google is generating data how many formats are there okay you can't even count okay like google is generating data okay and how many formats are there okay we don't even know right so we can in simple words we can say that big data is you know is nothing but a large volumes of data that are too complex and too diverse okay uh, to analyze with uh, you know traditional data processing methods so it will be very difficult to analyze you know the big data with our traditional method so for that we'll be using a different tools like spark hadoop uh, you know scala uh, the you know cassandra like that so any example of uh, you know big data like we can say social media is generating big data internet of thing is generating big data as well as you know scientific research as well you will yes youtube but in youtube you will find that you know specific you know video type okay as well as you can consider as the you know their templates the name of the way you know the title and all okay that is again you know guys do you know how many hours of uh, you know uh, like people are you know uploading youtube videos okay like uh, like hundreds of our you know video in one minute on youtube like people are just you know the content creators youtubers and are uploading you know the videos okay nothing but around you know 100 hours okay and per minute okay they are uploading that like 100 hours of data or the videos so that big kind of data you know is there in the you know youtube so what about next metadata yeah so we can say that okay particular this metadata refers to data that describes other data examples include file names creation dates and author names right then let us talk about next one which is personal data okay so as we know in the name itself personal data so what are the different examples of the personal data name addresses mobile number you know our uh, you know our details aadhar card okay biometric like so these are the uh, we can say that the personal data right then what about next machine data what about next machine data in the name itself machine is you know machine data is nothing but the the data generated by any machine or any devices right such as uh, you know log forms okay like data is uh, machines are generating you know log files right uh, as well as you know sensors from you know iot devices as well as you know gps data we can say from vehicles okay so that is nothing but machine data you can say yes smart watches yeah absolutely right yeah there are so many machines and uh, what are the different data they are generating so that is nothing but you know machine data then what about next data which is nothing but geospatial data what about guys geospatial data so we can simply say this refers to data that includes information about locations and geographic features such as maps you know uh, satellite imaginary okay and uh, gps coordinates and uh, right now you will find that the many uh, you know many sites okay where you can see that the live location of each and every plane okay like like let's say a boeing uh, 757 is uh, you know is uh, you know going from the you know pune to mumbai 
okay so you will find that on the uh, that the location for that particular you know the live location for that plane in the that particular site as well okay then what about next text data we can say so in the name itself text data is nothing but the a uh, data which consists of text okay such as our emails emails is nothing but the text data chat logs okay uh, that like our chatting data is nothing but the you know text data then documents okay if you talk about a uh, you know a post okay talking about or explaining something uh, some product or explaining some algorithm so that is nothing but a text data okay and what about image and video data as we know okay in the name itself okay it's a image and video files right like our photographs we can say yes pictures uh, our videos our you know selfies our dps as well as the you know live streams yeah photography you know then you know wedding uh, ceremonies video like that so many image and video data is there yeah okay so these are the few different types of data okay you will find that okay other than this you will find that again multiple types of data are there okay so you will have to know about okay what are the different data are there so if you know the types of the data so which means that you will uh, you know that like like then it will be very easy to like uh, to find the tools okay to uh, you know handle that kind of data okay let's say if we have the python so we can use python to handle structure data okay what about unstructured data so if you have a no sql okay mongodb so you can handle unstructured data as well if you have a spark hadoop so you can handle unstructured data in the same way okay you can handle the same structured data by using you know uh, python spark hive scale as well then in the big data there are so many tools apache spark hive pick uh, scala cassandra okay these are the big data tools okay then if you talk about the metadata okay then you can see again you can handle this data any of this tool okay personal data is again we can say that the uh, you can handle with any tools okay excel as well then machine data okay you can handle with any tools okay that i mentioned already okay geospatial data okay you can handle the uh, this this particular tool okay geospatial data okay for creating the dashboards and all okay to explain that particular data by using you know tab tableau power uh, power bi data visualization tools right okay if we have the text data you can handle with the python r okay and any uh, different kinds of tools okay you if you have the image data again you can use the same tools okay so which means that if you know the data so you can able to hand that uh, uh, you should uh, like you will like it will be very easy to find the tools to handle that particular data okay what are some of the challenges okay like you guys are facing or uh, in simple words okay like if i you know users face when protecting their online privacy okay what are the different challenges as we are facing as a users to protect our online privacy so let's go ahead and see what are the different challenges are there okay like a uh, like lot of people okay are facing you know to protect the online privacy we can simple words we can say okay first one is nothing but the complexity so if we talk um, talking about this complexity so we can say online privacy can be complicated because like if you are you know searching for a any keyword okay let's say cyber security okay you search on the google and you just uh, you know open any website so in the first okay it will ask you to you know uh, you know to accept the cache okay isn't it 
okay to accept the caches so that is nothing but you can see that uh, you will find that and if you denied it or decline it so many times you will find that uh, that website uh, uh, you know won't work and you will have to you know search for you know the another website so uh, we can simply say it can be complicated so with a multitude of privacy setting and options available on different platforms and websites okay so it can be challenging for users to understand and you know navigate these settings making it easy to you know inadvertently share personal information okay now what about next lack of awareness okay like lot of people who uh, like who, who even don't know about these things okay what is online privacy okay like many users are not again aware of uh, uh, you know aware of the risk of sharing their personal information online or the steps they can take to protect their privacy so this can lead to users unknowingly sharing sensitive information you know such as their location browsing histories or any kind of personal details okay <clears throat> then what about next social engineering yeah right social engineering you will find that uh, nowadays there are a lot of social engineering attacks are there such as phishing wishing smishing you know and they can trick user into revealing their personal information right and attackers may send fake emails or messages that appear to be from a legitimate source asking users to provide their login credentials as well as personal details or even financial information too right then what is the next challenge tracking okay <clears throat> like many websites and platforms track users online activities okay like collecting online uh, collecting data on their browser history location and other personal information and you know user may not be aware of this tracking activities or how their data is being used okay like for example if you search you know uh, let's say you wanted to buy a smartphone okay so you search uh, any you know any particular smartphone or any specific smartphone okay in any particular range or or you know any particular price you can say so you search on google and you know apparently okay you are you know you are using you know uh, youtube and over there you will see that the same advertisement okay related to smartphone okay like if you uh, you know if you shared uh, if you check for a iPhone 14, okay. So same, uh, you know, same device you will see in the advertisement on YouTube as well, because, you know, Google is using device to, you know, to track their customers, their users, okay, to, you know, show them the, uh, you know, the correct advertisement, okay. So, so sometimes that you know that might be harmful to the user right then what about third party data sharing what about third party data sharing right uh, like as we know uh, now okay like whatsapp updated his uh, you know privacy to you know shared the all the details about uh, the whatsapp user and whatsapp will share that particular user's data to the facebook okay and as we all know uh, like there are multiple you know uh, you know news were there okay like uh, facebook just uh, you know sharing their users data to other you know companies okay right like uh, cambridge analytica okay so that's the issue then what about next lack of control right like uh, recently uh, you see that like if you are using you know uh, the mobiles which are you know not the updated one so you will find that you know uh, you don't have that much control on your data 
okay but nowadays you will see that uh, you know iphone uh, you know uh, just come up with a data privacy okay like the if you are using iphone so uh, like you you should know that what kind of data like uh, that app is asking and what kind of data is you know app extracting from your device so you can decide whether you will have to give the permission to that particular app or not okay so it will show you the first time okay when you are downloading that particular app and installing in in your system okay so we can say users may feel that uh, they have you know little control over their personal information okay which is online there like particularly when using social media or other platforms with complex privacy you know policies and settings right then what about data breaches as we know data breaches can expose users personal information to attackers putting them at risk of identity theft any kind of fraud or other forms of online abuse right and user may not always know when a data breach has occurred or uh, how their information has been compromised right then what about next government surveillance okay like uh, many times okay you will see that the many uh, news regarding you know uh, like the few person okay yes absolutely the very uh, famous example for this is nothing but the pegasus software okay like government or any uh, you know influential person or uh, very uh, you know reputed person using that particular pegasus software to you know uh, to you know see the activity for uh, the any you know particular person okay like very famous example i would say which is nothing but the you know one uh, famous reporter okay that uh, you know uh, murdered in the turkey okay uh, and that murder you know uh, you will find that the uh, the mds okay and the uh, the person who is uh, you know uh, being uh, you you can say that who you know uh, who have some kinds of you know uh, connection with that yeah with that particular news okay so in that case as well you will find that the pegasus uh, is there in the news okay at that time as well okay then what about device security okay then if you're talking about you know users online privacy okay can also be compromised by insecure devices okay like such as unsecured uh, you know wi-fi networks like if you are using any public wi-fi so that will be very dangerous for you okay or outdated software as well okay like attackers may exploit vulnerabilities in these devices to gain access to users personal information right okay like let's say uh, nowadays there is you know windows 11 is there and if you are using windows 7 so like which is nothing but that that is nothing but the outdated software okay and you might uh, you know you should not use that particular okay you will have to use the updated one right so sometimes okay device security is also an you know issue then what about next online harassment like if we know like online harassment such as uh, you know cyber bullying and trolling okay can be a significant threat to users okay online privacy and safety many times you will see that the like in the news because of the online harassment or you know any kind of trolling okay like uh, you will find that the that that person x person suicides okay x person did the suicide attempt or like like that so there are so many incidents what happened in the past okay because of this particular online harassment okay like the mostly the you know uh, females suffered okay mostly okay because of this online harassment right so we should know what are the different challenges okay user is facing to protect their online privacy right if we're talking about 
the next time which is nothing but data privacy controls okay as we know okay like if we wanna you know talk about a data privacy control so we can simply say that data privacy controls refers to the measures and processes you know which are implemented to ensure the again cia right confidentiality integrity and availability of personal data and it is very essential to protect the personal data from unauthorized access used and disclosure right so let's understand okay what are the different ways are there to implement data privacy controls okay like as we know data encryption is there okay you can uh, you know protect your data by using this data encryption okay like uh, like just by doing encrypting your you know personal data so if you encrypted your personal data so basically uh, you know in the uh, like like make it in a you know unreadable format okay without the correct decryption key right so if you know the key and you have the encrypted personal data of yours so no issue with that okay like you are you know keeping your data uh, which is very private okay up to you so thereby ensuring its confidentiality right like uh, if you talk about the example so you know uh, many times online banking okay banks are using this you know encryption to protect the confidentiality of uh, its customers uh, you know and uh, uh, their financial data including login credentials account details and you know transaction information right in the healthcare records as well like medical you know medical records you know basically contain sensitive personal information and uh, you know encryption is used to protect them from unauthorized access or theft right like in email communication so many email providers offer end-to-end -end encryption to protect that email content is only visible to the sender and intended recipient okay like many messaging apps as well use the data encryption right like uh, in the whatsapp whatsapp also mentioned a data encryption end-to-end -end encryption okay of the chats then what about next access control okay so basically implementing excel access control measures okay such as authentication and authorization okay which restricts access to personal data to authorize personal only all right so uh, if you talk about you know the examples about this so in a you know workplace access like many times you will find that if you are using a company's laptop or company's steps desktop so you will find that the many restrictions are there okay because uh, like for companies okay data is very sensitive issue for them right so that's why they restrict access to sensitive areas and information through physical access controls such as security bags or biometric authentication right like in the cloud computing you know cloud service providers use access controls okay to ensure that only authorized users can access data stored in the cloud right then uh, if you talk about mobile devices so many mobile devices offer password or fingerprints based you know uh, access controls to you know ensure that only the device owner can get the access of uh, you know their personal data stored on that particular device right then what about next data anonymization right yeah okay let me give you an example okay for this let's say okay uh, i have the data of yours okay your name your email id your age your mobile number okay uh, your qualification right so let's say okay if i remove your name your email id your mobile number from the list okay let's say i have a excel file and in that there are you know 
your you know there is a data of yours okay so i have name email id mobile number your age your qualification like that i have so many details of yours okay so let's say if i remove few details like your name your mobile number your email okay <clears throat> and now okay i have shared that data okay which means that i have shared the only age okay but uh, like the person like now i don't know about like the age okay i have the age but i don't know uh, like the age of which person right i have the you know qualification details but i don't know the you know persons like which person's qualification is this right so that is nothing but a data anonymization okay like simply we can say anonymization uh, is nothing but personal data involves you know removing all identifiable information ensuring that the data cannot be tracked back to the individual right like for example census data okay like census data is anonymized before it is released to researchers or the public to protect the privacy of individuals who provided the information so sensor data is very famous example of data anonymization right then marketing research okay in the market you will find that there are so many surveys uh, are going on okay but no one will share the you know individuals data okay with their names their email id their phone numbers their address like that okay first they remove that their identity like the number email id uh, you know uh, the name like that and they then you will find that they will share the data okay so market is you know marketing research so market is as firms use anonymization to protect the identities of participants in surveys or focus groups while still obtaining valuable insights right in the healthcare research as well so here also in healthcare research often involves the use of anonymized uh, you know patient data to protect privacy while still enabling researchers to study medical conditions and treatments okay then what about data minimization what about data minimization like we can say collecting only the minimum amount of personal data necessary for the intended purpose can basically reduce the risk of data breaches yeah isn't it and protect the privacy of individuals right so for example payment processing like merchants often only collect the minimum amount of data necessary for processing payments such as you know card holder name credit card number and expiry uh, you know expiration date right uh, like let's say uh, online account creation as well you will find that many websites only require you know users to provide basic information such as name and email address when uh, you know creating an account to minimize the amount of data collected right as well as you know uh, travel booking websites as well like travel companies only collect the necessary information such as passenger name and flight details to book travel arrangements for customers okay then what about next regular data audits okay like we can say conducting regular data audits helps to identify any vulnerabilities in data privacy control measures and address them promptly right so basically okay if you're talking about this term okay uh, like internal audit external audit you know as well as incident response okay so in the internal audit we can say companies conduct regular internal audits okay to basically identify and address any vulnerabilities in data privacy controls and uh, you know ensure compliance with regulations okay like when in uh, like if companies are you know doing external audits so any any third party auditors you know can also be hired to conduct independent audits of an organization's data privacy practices right and you know uh, if you're talking about incident response so you know after a data breach companies conduct audits to identify the cause and you know extent of the data breach and uh, you know take corrective actions 
to prevent future incidents all right data protection impact assessment okay dp i e so here okay data protection impact assessment so conducting a dp i a helps to identify and assess the potential impact of data processing activities on the privacy of individuals okay like let's say for example new technologies implementation okay uh like before implementing new technology uh you know such as customer relationship management crm system company conducts a you know this dpia uh, data protection impact assessment i would say to assess the potential impact on data privacy and identify any necessary mitigation measures right then uh, in the merger and uh, acquisitions as well like uh, like when two companies merging okay so at that time a dpia is conducted basically to you know assess the impact on data privacy and ensure that any necessary changes are made to comply with regulations okay like in the data processing changes as well when changes are made to you know data processing activities such as change in the type of data collected or uh, you know the purpose of, for which it is collected so at that time a dpia is conducted to you know assess the impact on data privacy right then what about next privacy policies okay so you know developing and implementing comprehensive privacy policies that outline the organization's data privacy you know practices including uh, data collection use and sharing okay so you will find that the so many uh, you know data collection privacies are there okay like a you know website privacy policies mobile app privacy policies employee privacy policies like that okay so you will find so many privacy policies are there okay like there are some limitations you can say in the simple words okay yes then what about next employee training so educating employees on data privacy best practices and organization privacy policies can help reduce the risk of accidental you know accidental or international data breaches right like the you know security awareness training privacy policies and procedures okay so what are the you know different challenges okay which is user okay what what are the different challenges user is facing okay while to protect its uh, you know their online privacy okay so in the way in the same way if i ask you something which is uh, related to that okay let's say what are you know some of the challenges you know are you know what are the you know different kinds of challenges are there okay like the businesses face okay when protecting users privacy okay like what are the different challenges you know faced by the businesses okay to protect their users privacy okay so what are the different kinds of challenges are there okay faced by the businesses yes outsourcing yes hackers yeah data breaches we can simple words say yes lack of awareness right yeah yeah if you're talking about the first challenge okay which is nothing but compliance with data protection laws okay compliance with data protection lost okay so as we know businesses must comply with data protection laws okay which can be complex and vary by you know jurisdiction right so compliance can require significant resources and expertise and failure to comply can result in legal and financial consequences right 
if we're talking about the next challenge, which is nothing but balancing privacy with business needs. Okay, so businesses must balance the need to collect and use customer data for you know legitimate business purposes with the need to protect customer privacy okay so this can be challenging as uh, you know the businesses must be transparent about their data privacy you know uh, while also you know uh, meeting customer expectations and industry standards right then next challenge for the businesses you know to you know protect their users privacy which is nothing but data breaches okay the cyber attacks you can say so data breaches can be costly for businesses okay both in terms of financial losses and damage you know damage to its uh, you know business reputation like businesses must implement robust security measures to protect customer data from any kind of attacks okay but even with uh, these measures in uh, place breaches can still occur right then what about next third party data sharing so here you can see guys okay like uh, many businesses okay share their customer data with third party service providers or advertisers okay so that is raising concerns about how the data is being used and who has access to it right so businesses must be transparent about their data sharing practices and ensure that the you know the third party are you know complying with data protection laws right then employee training okay employee training okay become a you know uh, very important for this okay like employees must be trained on data protection based practices and understand the importance of protecting customer privacy like failure to properly train employees basically can result in accidental data breaches or other privacy violations right then ethical considerations okay like businesses must provide consider the you know uh, must consider the you know ethical implementations of their data practices you know particularly when dealing with sensitive customer data okay so they must ensure that data are not engaging in unethical or discriminatory practices that could harm customers or violate their privacy all right then what about next technology and infrastructure so if we talking about this so businesses must invest in technology and infrastructures necessary to protect customer data including firewalls uh, we can say encryption and other security measures as well so this can be expensive sometimes and require ongoing maintenance as well as we can say updates to keep up with changing threats right so addressing these challenges requires a commitment to you know data protection and you know privacy from businesses including robust privacy uh, you know policies and procedures ongoing training and education and investment in technology and infrastructure we can say uh, you know businesses must prioritize customer privacy and ensure that they are meeting the requirements of data protection laws while also meeting the needs of their customer and their stakeholders right now okay let us understand what are the different you know data privacy are there you know data privacy laws are there so let's understand this like all over the world you will see that in different countries you will see that the different laws of data privacy okay so what are the different laws are there so let's go and understand a few uh, you know data privacy laws okay and uh, let's uh, you know talk about the you know examples of those okay so let's go with the as we know okay uh, the data privacy laws are legal framework okay that are regulate how personal data is collected 
we can say processed uh, as well as stored and shared by organization okay so here let's discuss the first one which is nothing but the general data protection regulation gdpr okay so so let's understand this thing okay gdpr data you know general data protection regulation so we can say that the gdpr is a comprehensive data privacy law right that governs how personal data is processed with protected you know in the european union right uh, basically it applies to all organization that collect processed or store personal data of you know european union's residents uh, you know regardless of where the organization is located okay let's say if the let's say if we talk about tiktok so tiktok is from the china okay uh, like, like tiktok is located at china but like people uh, of the european unions okay we can say european union residents are also using the tiktok okay so this gdpr okay this this law okay is also for the tiktok as well because tiktok is operating in the eu as well you know european union as well in the so if you're talking about uh, you know a few examples about this okay so uh, like let's say in you know in 2019 a british airways was fined around 183 million euros by the uk information commissioner's office ico for a data breach that affected a personal information of around you know 5 lakh customers of you know british airways so the breach includes uh, you know the names of the uh, the customers uh, their addresses you know their payment card information as well as a you know their travel booking details as well right so the ios you know ico uh, you know the in information commissioner officer found that british airways had failed to implement adequate security measures to protect personal data in violation of gdpr okay so in violation of the gdpr right so basically uh, like for british airways okay uh, you know got the fine of around 183 million euros okay like if you're talking about another example of this gdpr law so like in 2020 h&m okay h&m a swedish clothing retailer was fined around 35.2 million euros by the you know hamburg data protection authority in german like for unlawfully collecting and storing personal data on its employee and basically you know that data includes sensitive information of the you know of the in uh, of its employees such as their health conditions and family issues okay right and was collected through surveillance of employees okay like surveillance of employees activity and conversations right so that's why okay they got a fine around you know 35.2 million euros right then if we're talking about a next act we can say next law so which is nothing but california consumer privacy act ccpa okay so let's say like if we're talking about you know the ccpa is a data privacy law that regulates how personal data of california residents uh, is collected processed and you know shared by the businesses so it gives customers to uh, you know the right to know that you know personal data is being collected about them right and the right to request deletion of their personal data as well and the right to you know you know option out of the sale of their personal data as well okay so if we're talking about the example for this law is nothing but like in 2020 zoom video communication 
was sue for allegedly you know violating the ccpa by failing to adequately protect their the per, you know personal data of users so the lawsuit was you know filed after reports of security vulnerabilities in the video conferencing platform led to unauthorized access to users data right like in the same way like in 2021 a data breach at the california dmv exposed the you know personal information of more than 38000 drivers so again the data breach includes uh, the name of the driver addresses uh, license you know license plates we can say their numbers as well as you know vehicle identification numbers as well and was attributed to a programming error that allowed okay you know that allowed unauthorized access to dmv records okay just a you know programming error because of that the hacker got you know unauthorized access to the records okay now what about next privacy guys okay uh, next law which is nothing but hipaa okay <clears throat> so we can say hipaa is a you know U us federal law right that regulates the privacy and security of medical information and basically it requires healthcare providers you know health plans and business uh, you know associates to safeguard protecting you know protecting health information phi and to disclose uh, you know protected health information only in certain circumstances okay now okay you will see that the health insurance portability and accountability act okay that is again we can say that very much important okay and you will find that you know from the example you will understand why it is so much important like in 2019 the university of you know rochester's medical center urmc was fined around three million dollars for failing to secure the electronic protected health information you know of patients so the breach involved a misconfigured server that exposed the you know electronic protected health information of over around 1 lakh patients <clears throat> similarly in 2020 in a florida you know a florida physician was fined around $5000 for violating hipaa you know hipaa act by you know accessing the medical records of patients without a valid reason okay so the physician had accessed the records of patients who was not under their care so in violation of ifas privacy rule right so that is again the why the hipaa law is important okay what about next personal information protection and electronic documents act okay we can say that the pipda right this uh, this particular law is a canadian federal privacy law okay basically that regulates how private sector organization collect use and disclose personal information in the course of commercial activities right and it applies to you know personal information collected used and disclosed you know in the course of uh, commercial activities we can say so uh, if you're talking about the you know examples about this particular uh, act so like in 2018 a canadian online retailer okay husband's bay company hbc okay was the subject of a data breach that exposed the personal information of around uh, its you know 34000 customers and the breach included the like the included the names email addresses and phone numbers and was basically you know attributed to a vulnerability in hbc security system so like later hbc was you know find uh, around you know uh, a 5 lakh you know the cad the canadian dollar we can say by the office of the you know privacy commissioner of canada 
for failing to adequately protect personal information in violation of webda similarly you know in 2020 a canadian court ruled that facebook had violated webda by failing to obtain proper consent for the collection use and disclosure of users personal information and the court found that facebook had made false or misleading statements about the privacy of users information and had failed to adequately protect user data from third party apps okay then what about next law guys which is nothing but you know the data protection act dpa okay now again this app is a you know uk data privacy law we can say and basically that regulates the processing of you know our personal data by organizations uh, that is you know basically it provides this law provides you know individuals with the right to access their personal data and you know the right to request that their personal data is corrected and the you know again the uh, it will give a you know a right to uh, to the you know users to request that their personal data is erased or deleted by the organization right so like let's say for example tiktok okay right so we can we can say that the you know uh, the you know the not tiktok the there is uh, i guess uh, you know talk talk we can say uh, and uh, the talk talk we can say uh, in like in 2016 a talk talk which is a you know a uk based telecommunication company we can say suffered a significant data breach okay which affecting you know nearly around 157000 customers okay and the breach results you know resulted in the theft of you know personal information of the customers including their names uh, you know their addresses their you know birth dates their phone numbers the even their you know email addresses as well as you know bank details as well so this incident was investigated by the you know uk's information commissioner office ico and resulted in a around 4 lakh you know uh, you know 400000 euros fine for tok tok for breaching the dpa means uh, for you know for violating the this data protection act right then uh, if you talking about another incident what happened in you know in 2020 okay that incident uh, we can say also known as uh, you know flybe email marketing okay so here also you know in this uh, incident as well the information uh, commissioner office ico issued a fine for around 70000 euros to flybe okay so again this is a, a uk based airline for sending more than 3.3 million unwanted marketing emails to customers without their consent okay so the emails were sent as part of campaign to encourage dormant customers to make new bookings okay and the ico found that flybe had breached the dpa by sending the emails without valid consent okay and then we also uh, have the you know very popular google street view okay so you know in 2010 it was discovered that google street view okay uh, like google street view cars had been collecting data from unsecure wifi networks okay as they uh, as they you know drove through residential areas you know and the data collected uh, you know including personal information such as the passwords email messages and you know browsing history okay and the incident resulted in an you know investigation by the uk's information commissioner officers ico okay which basically concluded that the you know google had breached the dpa and the google was ordered to you know delete the data and was later fined around you know 5 lakh 
euros by the you know inter uh, you know information commissioner office okay so basically these are the you know just few examples of data privacy laws that exist around the world and basically it is important for organizations to comply with these laws to protect the privacy of individuals and avoid penalties for non-compliance okay 